It's important when you're painting to see what it is you're creating when you paint. That may sound odd, but from a teacher's standpoint, it's remarkable how many times you can come up to a student and you realize they don't see what they're actually painting. They don't see what they're creating. And the reason is they become so engrossed in some part, they don't see the whole. You remember, we've described composition as the whole that binds all the parts together. It's the foundation. So if you're talking about abstract value masses or armatures or color shapes, they're all built on that foundation. The road and strong horizontal of the midground create an L armature. The center of interest is the sunlight hitting the road in the midground where it turns off to the left. Notice the shadows across the road. Each surface, the dried grasses at the side of the road, the gravel, the asphalt, have different colors and values, and the color of the shadows follow that. The shadows don't just become a uniform dark mass. You can key your painting to be intense or tonal, light or dark, but once you've decided on a key, you need to be consistent. Here you could imagine a whole landscape keyed as intense as this foreground shadow, but relative to everything else in the painting, it is now pulling way too much attention. You feel your eye pulled there. If you intensify the contrast at the center of interest too much, we get stuck there. We don't travel out into the painting, but get glued to that spot. Put too intense a color, a color that might be fine in another context, out to one side of the picture plane, and immediately our eye follows it there. There's an obvious L to this composition, back to the dark reflection of the water and then over to the left. But you could also call it a backward C, or an S coming from the top middle down to the left by the river and then curving around to the foreground left. The type of armature isn't fixed in some painting academy. This is an L and it can only be an L. It's a structure that interacts with the edges of the picture plane and helps you integrate the movement around the major value masses of your composition. Here again, too intense a color pulls the eye. That's why the color intensity exercises are so useful. It gives you control over the pull and attraction of the color shapes you paint. Too many bright colors like this and all of a sudden the whole composition is overwhelmed by it. Gradations are a really important tool to keep your eye moving in the direction you want us to. By reducing the value in the water in the bottom left, the eye gets distracted now by the difference in the value in the edge created between the shore and the water, and so our eye is now getting pulled there. As it was originally painted, the value and intensity of the water and the shore were the same, only the hue was changing, so it didn't attract much attention. By darkening the value of the foreground, even though, like many of the other changes being made here, it could easily have been this dark in life, we now get pulled there, distracted from the natural flow along the bank of the river. And here another increased intensity change pulls our eye out to the top right. A friend of mine had this old Cadillac sitting in a field behind his house. It's a portrait, so everything there is to support the center of interest, the car itself. Notice the gradation used on the shed's wall pushes us into the painting so we don't get pulled out of the picture plane as we do now when that gradation is gone. That gradation was manufactured intentionally to do that. There was no shift in value on that wall. The next three changes, using increased color intensity, pull the eye out to the edge of the picture plane and away from the portrait, away from the intended focus. You can see it doesn't take that much to pull the eye.